Good morning. This is Keeler Bryson with Teachable Life Moments coming to you from my backyard. Uh, the temperatures have dropped and it feels really good out here this morning and so I thought I would just kind of do a quick little recording uh, on the series that I'm currently teaching on dealing with the code of conduct for relationships. So um, Yesterday, we delved into our second class, and it dealt with let me off this ship, um, and it talked about when relationships go bad. And so yesterday, we were able to address three more code of conducts for relationships, but that third one that we touched on yesterday was the, the sixth code of conduct, which is be selective. And... Um, this morning when I was lying down, I was looking at my timeline um, on Facebook and I noticed that uh, someone had shared something that basically brought confirmation to some of the things that we discussed in the class yesterday on um, basically that sixth law, which is that sixth code of conduct, which is being be selective with people. You know, we have several relationships that we encounter on a daily basis whether it's with associates, co-workers, um, family members, you know, romantic relationships, whether it's a spouse or someone that we're dating or, or what have you. And in those relationships, um, it's important that we be selective. I mean, we don't want to form relationships with folks unless we have strong reasons to believe that those relationships can become healthy and viable relationships. Um, so many times we, if we're not careful, we form relationships with folks uh, for superficial reasons. And this is part of the reason why I'm taking the time to really delve into this a little bit deeper on being selective. Um, a lot of times when we look at it from a romantic perspective, you know, I see and I have seen a lot of people um, form relationships with someone that they're romantically interested in. Uh, for basically the wrong motives you know they they're not selective on a deep level they're not very discerning when they're trying to be um, trying to come up with reasons to be interested in a person a lot of times the reasons that they select that person is superficial such as he's fine or she's fine or they have a good job or you know they come from a good family that, that have um, uh, prestige and they have money and um, they have influence and you know all of that is okay but that should not be the primary reason why we select relationships with folks um, and I have found I have watched I have observed that when people form relationships with other people for the wrong reasons impure reasons it usually backfires and the relationship doesn't end up growing and turn into something he uh, healthy and something that's a relationship of longevity. And so um, we see people sometimes join churches for the wrong reason. And then eventually the motive will come out or, um, and then everybody wondering what happened, what happened? Well, the motive will always catch up with you. And ladies, if you're single and fellas, if you're single, I really want you to, to tap in and pay attention to what I'm saying on this. Because if you are out here selecting people based upon uh, external reasons, because you think they're fine and they have money, um, or they got a nice car and all of that, that's not deep enough. Because the moment those things are gone, you're no longer interested, and then the relationship is not going to go anywhere. So let's begin to think deeper than these superficial, vain reasons. Um, you know, it's time out for selecting people based upon those reasons what is their character like these are the things that we want to pay attention to um, do they know themselves do they admit when they're wrong are they givers do they know how to say they're sorry you know are they selfish are they greedy you know are they arrogant mean or do they operate from ego these are things that we want to pay attention to because if a person um, do not have these characteristics but they have money, I'm here to tell you that's not going to last long. 
I mean, do they have a uh, patience, a calm temperament, or are they aggressive and violent, hot-headed? You know, are they uh, loyal? Do they have integrity, or do they just, you know, operate from a place of just they're not loyal to anybody? They don't, um, they don't tell the truth. They don't do what's right. Um, they tend to over-exaggerate. Or they uh, a person that operates from an image. They want people to believe that they're living up here when in actuality they may be living down here. And so these are the things that we want to pay attention to. Because I'm here to tell you, a person can be fine today, but when you're in the deep trenches of a trial, a family crisis, good looks is not what's going to cause you to get out of there. It's going to take a person with some integrity, some uh, a strong work ethic, somebody that's committed. You know, does this person that you're interested in or this group of people that you want to connect with, are they um, people of commitment? Do they honor their commitments? You know, are they people that build up people? Or is it a person that always tearing people down, always critical and judging and, and uh, always competing with another group? These are the things that we want to avoid. This, what is, this is what it means to be selective. You know... Um, does the person show care and compassion? I mean, they can have money and all that, but if they don't have any compassion or they don't know how to share, they're certainly not going to give you any of their money. In fact, they're probably going to think you're just there trying to get their money, and so they'll be trying to hold on to it and not show you any generosity. So being selective, it basically means you're being discerning about who you allow in your inner circle uh, of your life. Uh, because I'm here to tell you that everybody just everybody can't be in your circle. Everybody can't be in my circle. I am very selective about who I let in and who I let uh, get close to me. And I'm not quick to let everybody and anybody in my circle. And I do that as a protective measure. Um, because when you let the wrong people in your in your circle, um, they will drain you. And that's uh, code of conduct of relationship number four. Don't run on empty. And the wrong people in your circle tend to drain the life out of you like a leech. And then once they get everything they need from you, they fall off. And I have too much to do, too much on my schedule. And I need every ounce of energy that I have to carry out the responsibilities that I'm called to uh, complete. And I cannot do that. And you cannot do that if you are running on empty. And so that's why you got to protect your circle and, and be guarded uh, as far as who you let into your circle. So be discernful. What does it mean to be discernful? It means that you are paying attention to the things that are not being said. A lot of people do a lot of talking. They're telling you everything that they want you to know. But I have learned to pay attention to what they're not saying. And when you're discernful, you're able to hear the truth, see the truth, even though a person is trying to project to you this perfect mass of an image but if you have discernment, you can see their real character, their real motives. Um, and when you see those things, then you can decide, decide at that point, is this something I can work with or is this completely a deal breaker? Um, and being discernful, I mean, that takes a bit of being in the presence of God so that you can strengthen that ability to discern people and their real intentions and whether or not they have that true potential to um, operate and help you and to grow with you in your future. Because if uh, you don't recognize those things, it could be a stumbling block. And we know when you encounter a stumbling block, there's not going to be any movement, uh, forward movement. Being selective means you do not want or attempt to develop meaningful relationships with everyone. You just can't. Everybody cannot go. Uh, we talked about how sometimes you can come in relationships with people that are not healthy and they're draining. They take away. They never add to you. They're never willing to sacrifice the relationship. You're the one always giving. And then as a result, I have seen people, they could be doing well for themselves. And then all of a sudden, they connect with the wrong people. At first, it looked like they would be great to connect with, but then afterwards, they connect with their wrong person. Next thing you know, you see them, they're struggling, they're suffering, they're encountering different problems and crises that um, they would have never thought that they would be in, in uh, encountering, but it's because of that connection. Some connections bring, bring trouble, and then some connections bring double. 
And we want to certainly move in the direction of those relationships that add value to our lives. Being selective means you're careful and you're deliberate about building relationships. You know, some people are not careful, they're careless because they are building that relationship from a motive of uh, vanity, the superficial. You're not looking deep. And then when a relationship goes sour, your eyes come open and you're wondering, how in the world did I get connected with that person, with that group, with that particular um, colleague? And it's because you lowered your standards or either you didn't have any in the uh, to begin with as it relates to a relationship. You didn't have a code of conduct for your relationship. And when you don't have those standards and code of conduct, it's easy to get wrapped up with the wrong relationship because your discernment meter is turned off or is not engaged. And then you don't have any criteria by which to abide by. And so, yeah, it's easy to get caught up. But when your eyes come open, then it becomes so clear. You're like, what in the world was I thinking? Well, if you don't have that code of conduct, then you are not thinking from that place of wisdom. Being selective means that you're not willing to let the wrong people influence you or your future in negative ways. You know, some people want to be in a relationship so bad with this particular group, this particular association, this particular person that they believe is a person of influence or this, they believe this organization will help them to move forward. And, uh, or they want to be in this romantic relationship with this person so bad until that desperation causes them to end up letting people influence them in negative ways. And uh, don't be desperate. Don't be so desperate for a friendship, a position, status, a romantic relationship to the extent that you lower your standards and you find yourself compromising your values, compromising your truth, not honoring yourself, but always sacrificing for that other person for the sake of what you think that they can bring to you. But you didn't realize that they were a person that didn't have any integrity and therefore they're convincing you to do what they do. You know, this old saying says that birds of a feather of the same feather flock together. Yeah, it rubs off. If they are not healthy people, that stuff kind of rub off on you if you're not careful. But if it's a healthy person, healthy relationships that have good values, they're people of integrity, then that will rub off on you and that'll help you to grow and it'll just help you to go up instead of being stuck in a place of, um, indecisiveness and just no growth and stagnation nobody wants nobody has time for that we got too much to do in this world the world is in need of the great things that God has instilled in us and it needs to be released and we don't need to be dealing with no unnecessary drama um, such as people that are just straight up not healthy for us I have found that the main reason people become um, unequally yoked, a lot of times we hear about being unequally yoked in, you know, relationships. Churches are real big about and quick about um, teaching on that. But do you know you can be unequally yoked in a business relationship? You can be unequally yoked in a friendship. And basically what that means is that um, the relationship is unequal. It means in some way, some form or fashion, one person is bearing the burden, more of the burden of the relationship burden than the other person, uh, whether that's good or bad. And a lot of times that because of this unequally yoked or the relationship is unequal, uh, a lot of times those relationships are not successful. And it's because the person end up approving of attitudes and behaviors and words that they should not. You just shouldn't put up with it. And when we put up with things that we shouldn't, it leads us into that unequally yoke because what you're doing is sacrificing your belief and your relationship is getting out of balance. You're putting up with more than you should and then the relationship is becoming out of balance and then the next thing you know, there's failure. You know, everybody wanting what's, what's going on with you. They're like, man, that person has changed. Something has happened. And yeah, the relationship, you're in a bad relationship and it's draining you. And that stuff has a way of changing you and transforming you and not in a healthy way. So be careful. Don't let anybody attach to you that's going to take you down. We want to be with people that take us up in word, attitude, and behavior. When I connect with people, I pay attention to how I'm selective in how they talk to me. 
I'm selective in how they treat me. When you talk to me, you're going to talk to me respectfully. Your words are going to be words of encouragement, growth, and strength, and truth. That's not to say that I'm only there to hear the good things you have to say about me. Uh, I know that a good relationship often requires to, uh, to us to have that courageous and that hard conversation as well. But if I, if you're in my circle, first of all, I know that I can receive it from you because I trust you. We built a relationship, and I honor you. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't, you wouldn't be in my circle, and I wouldn't be in your circle. So I'm particular and selective about how that person talks to me. You know, I'm all about peace and lifting people up and encouraging people, doing what's right and saying those things that uplift people. Because let's be honest, the world is full of bad and negativity. You already know the things that um, that are not so great about you. And so why would you want to be in a relationship where every day, every time you interact with that person, all they're doing is beating you down with their words? No, people need to be lifted up. And so that's why I'm selective about how you talk, how you behave with me, and your attitude. And if you cannot um, measure up to that, then I don't, I can't have that person in my circle because, as I said, I need all of my energy. And when a negative person comes in, they have a way of draining you. And if you're not careful, they'll drain your resources too. And so, be selective. When um, <clears throat> you're being selective. Uh, today, as you're going out throughout, throughout your day, I want you to think on these questions. And it's questions that I asked the group yesterday. What unpleasant things are you tolerating or putting up with in your life right now as a result of the relationship in which you are in involved? You know, um, tolerating. What are you putting up with? You know, at first you, you, you know, deal with it pretty good. But over time, that stuff starts to change your behavior and your attitude. You get fed up and grumpy and mean and snappy with folks all around you. And it's because you're being drained. You're, you're, you're all that energy and that overflow that you once had, all that vivacity, now it's being drained. So what are you tolerating and putting up with? That's the first thing. Identify what it is. Write it down. Um, as a result, no, are you currently embracing anything you have never allowed in your life now uh, because of the influence of someone with whom you have a relationship. What is it that you would have never allowed, but you're finding yourself dealing with it? What is it? What once repulsed you that you no longer resist because you are in a relationship with a certain person? You know, there were certain things that you probably just, I mean, absolutely repulsed, but now you're finding yourself not resisting it. What is it? Why are you... Uh, no longer resisting it. Are your standards now lower than they once were because of the negative impact of someone with who you are associated? In what ways have you lowered your standards? Because a lot of times when we connect with people that are not healthy, when we connect with people that are not good for us, in some ways, and a lot of times in multiple ways, it's because we have lowered our standards. And when you're desperate for something, desperate to be in a relationship with someone, desperation will drive you to do things that you would not otherwise put up with, engage in, participate in, or tolerate. What is it? Don't lower your standards. Because if you lower your standards just to be in someone's life and just to be in their circle, you are not going to be happy. You're going to feel bad inside. You're going to lose yourself. And then you're going to be basically stagnated because you can't move forward until you bring correction to that area. And so <clears throat> I just wanted to take a few moments to really go a little bit deeper on that being selective because I have seen that this is one of the top reasons and areas where people end up making a poor decision in relationships and then it ends up negatively impacting their lives for the rest of them li uh, the rest of their lives simply because when you boil it all down it's because they was desperate and so hungry to be in certain relationships that it, they did whatever it took even if it meant giving themselves away losing themselves lowering their standards and that's not good and i mean all you're doing is just hurting yourself delaying the blessings that God have in store for you. Uh, just like Abraham, when he took Lot with him, God didn't tell him to take Lot. He took Lot anyway, 
Lot had some heart issues. We know he had heart issues because when they separated, Lot chose to go in the area that was closest to Sodom, which is a place of wickedness. Um, we know that Lot was not a healthy person to be around because the whole time that he was with Abraham, God stopped talking to Abraham. And once he and Lot separated, God then began to uh, talk back with Abraham. And so, in other words, his blessings were held up because of their relationship. God got silent on him. Has God gotten silent on you? Perhaps he's waited on you to correct some things, separate from some things, and uh, change some things so that you can move forward. So that's my time. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up. I just want to let you know that uh, next Sunday we will be going into our next topic of the Code of Conduct for Relationships. And on next Sunday I will be talking about when helping you is killing me. Uh, relationships with unhealth unhealthy people. We're going to delve into that and figure out how do we handle um, dealing with unhealthy people. What does that look like? All right, let me get out of here. I'm, my voice is <clears throat> trying to give me a little bit of issues. I'm just going to try to get some rest the rest of this day and enjoy the, uh, the beauty of being outside and enjoying these cooler temperatures these mor this morning. All right, you guys have a great day. Um, like, share, and uh, send us your comments. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.